Today, we're gonna to be shooting out two brand new yeast from Omega Yeast. Let's get started. So on today's yeast shootout, we have two yeast that are brand new releases from Omega Yeast. This is the OYL 401, and this is the OYL 400. Now, they are two very similar yeasts that put off different esters. And I will tell you, I'll show you on screen, a couple things about them, the information. On the OYL 401, this is um, a yeast that supposedly pulls out sundew, ripe strawberry, passion fruit, pear, and stone fruit um, notes from a mead. Or not from a mead, from a beer, really. We're, push, we're uh, trying these with meads. The flocculation's high. Temperature range 65 to 78, attenuation 72 to 85 percent, alcohol tolerance 12 percent ABV. This can go up for, uh, or this whole thing's for five gallons. We're just doing a gallon today, and that's fine. The other one, this is the OYL 400. This is the Bonanza. Sorry, the other one's the Sundew Ale. The Bonanza low flocculation, 64 to 75 er, percent. Fahrenheit for your temperature, 73 to 77% attenuation, 10% ABV. Um, this one has ripe pear esters, it says. Uh, make this, um, it's, they say use it for pastry stouts and stuff like that. Now, um, these, these are both graded for five gallons, but I'm using the whole packet because it's hard to save um, parts of yeast that are in liquid form. You can do it, I'm just not going to. If you've never seen a yeast shootout, go check out the video in the description, or the below, it tells you the rules to this. So what I've done here is I've mixed up my ingredients. I currently have in each one of these, one gallon of water in total. This is three uh, pounds, five ounces of honey, which is almost about three and a third um, pound of honey, of orange blossom honey. I use the same honey for all these tests. And uh, on top of that are yeast. What I have done already, and I'm showing you a video right now, is I've mixed those things up. I have put some, or put my yeast into these wine bottles to make yeast starters. And I'm doing that per request of the packet. It says if you're starting above 1.060, then you should make a yeast starter. Our starting gravity is 1.084. So we will see if these chew through all of that. Um, what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna put my information down on these and make sure I don't get them mixed up. Um, and then from there, we are going to let them ferment, tell you how fast each one ferments. We'll do a taste test and we will decide which of these yeast is the better yeast for this mead recipe. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my stuff away and let's let the shootout start. Here's an update on the yeast shootout. The Sundew Ale is at 1.022. Of course, it started at 1.084. And the Bonanza is at 1.008. This has been 21 days since the fermentation started. They've moved decently quickly. The Bonanza's obviously moved faster. Um, they frothed up quite a, quite a bit. You can see on the sides, there's some, some gunk, and that's from, of course, just the yeast. As they ferment, they create this, and there's some yeast bubbles and all those things. Anyways, um, my friend doing the most has already told me that these yeast are um, nutrient needing, so my nutrients I added before should get us through the fermentation, but I'm anticipating possibly having to hit this with some more. All right, and we're back. It's been 50 days since we started the primary. So this mead is still pretty young. I mean, less than two months is not a long time for a mead to age, but I still think it will be a good qualifier for the quality of these yeasts in this mead. On my left, I have the sundew. On my right, I have the bonanza. What I'm going to do is taste test them. I have an official score sheet that I'll do in a moment, which is basically, I'll show a picture of it on the screen, has some things, color and appearance, all the, that stuff. We're gonna score it and decide which one is the best. So let's start first by just doing a quick taste test. Okay, so I got some water here as well. I realize that probably will help in this tasting process. Let's first start by tasting the sundew. Well, actually, let's get some aroma checks on them. So again, this is sundew, this is bonanza. 
Interesting. Okay, so something odd about the Bonanza, it has like a semi chocolatey aroma to it that I'm getting. Now, and I forgot to mention, these yeasts are special and custom in that they have been basically genetically modified in a way to produce certain esters. So theoretically, we should get the banana and then the sundew, like tropically fruit type. Yeah, so the sundew has this, it definitely has a, um, a dark um, tropical note. I don't get the bright citrusy side that you think of tropical. It still has a little bit of that honey character, but it's very faint. It's, pretty, it's a pretty dark um, aroma. And then this one, the Bonanza, it has that weird chocolate aroma to it. It's hard for me to get past it to, um, I mean, I'm getting like honey, but I'm also getting a lot of that chocolatiness. Anyways, let's, talk, let's try them now. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty, um, Sundew is like, actually it's not bad. It's, it's got this uh, very, it's got this very uh, um, full, pretty full body. Still a little bit yeasty, of course, but the honey character is actually decently well-preserved on the actual palate. Yeah, it's got a little bite. Of course, you know, we're at a decent ABV with these, and so that means that we're gonna have bite, especially this young. I, I feel like the um, the yeast have retained the aroma that you get, or really the character of the honey, pretty well within this. Definitely got more bright floral notes, and um, I think that it, it has a little bit of a sweeter side with this mead. The final gravity, I mean, for both of these is 1.000. So theoretically, they're both dry, but this still has perceived sweetness. And so I think that comes from the sugars, the yeast still keeping the floral notes in there, which can sometimes actually produce more sugary sides to me. Okay, so now let's taste test the Bonanza. Ooh, yeah. Very, um, definitely get that chocolatey note on the palate too. It's very roasty, which is a little odd to me. Kind of like um, a charred pineapple. That's what I'm getting. It's like this pineapple taste plus like a burned side. Well, yeah, that's interesting. It's definitely pulled some um, tropical-y flavors out of this. I have a hard time saying banana. Banana to me has its own atypical, pretty clear taste. The bodies are the same. They have the same mouthfeel, I should say. Um, this one has a, is definitely darker than this, and this that chocolatey side is what's really throwing me off. Now, I could be mis misidentifying that as chocolatey flavor as something else, but I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna do my official review and come back and I'll tell you the scores. All right, here we are. The results, I'll just run down them. I'll start with the Bonanza. Um, I said color and appearance, seven out of 10. Hazy, but still good color retention. Um, nose bouquet was nine out of 15. And that is chocolatey, roasty, dark flower, slight honey aroma. Not really identifiable, but we use clover honey, so it doesn't matter. I'm sorry, we didn't use clover honey. We used orange blossom honey, so I should be getting orange or citrusy notes. Mm. Flavor, I said a little flat, not a lot of honey character, slight off flavor. I'm getting, I don't know if it's a fusel. My brain is starting to think that the chocolatey, chocolatey aroma can be confused as a fusel of some sort. If you know this, leave it down in the comments. Uh, finish, six out of 10, decent finish, not sweet. I mean, it's dry, uh, but falls off a little quick. There's not a lot of development. It just kind of hits the ground and flattens out. Um, honey character presence, four out of 10. Said not present, no floral side or uh, sweetness. And mouthfeel body said six out of 10. It's okay, juicy. The yeastiness might be attributing to the fuller body. Overall, 39 out of 70. The YSO, or sorry, the Sundew Ale is seven out of 10 for color and appearance. Hazy, good color retention. I mean, they both have the same thing essentially. Nose bouquet, eight out of 15, not extremely strong, slight honey aroma, hint of spice. I get this like un unidentifiable spice to me. I can't figure out what it is, but slight spiciness. Flavor, 12 out of 15, good honey retention, semi-sweet, bright melon, strawberry note, pretty good. It's a little yeasty, of course. Um, finish, eight out of 10. Yeasty and hot finish, sweetness lingers. It has a good mouthfeel. I do like this one that it, uh, a, a, it has a mouthfeel I can see giving more promise, I should say. Um, honey character presence, nine out of 10. This one attributed a great, or really uh, retained the honey character throughout the fermentation really well. Um, it's very present and I don't get, I think that the fruitiness is probably more retained from the orange blossom than it was in this. And the mouthfeel body, seven out of 10. This is a pretty full body, uh, good coating of the mouth, 
probably from the yeastiness, to be honest. But also, it's kept a decent mouthfeel. That's 51 out of 70. So, the Bonanza, 39 out of 70. The Sundew, 51 out of 70. The winner of this shootout between these two is the Sundew. Now, this one, Bonanza, I... It has something going on with it. I don't know. Again, I don't think I don't think it's diffusal, but I also don't believe that they would try and get chocolatey esters out of this one. So it could have been something odd. Both of them are, are decent. Now I would say if you want to make a mead with them, go for it. They are obviously intended for brewing, and they can create their own flavors and things. And um, I just think that it's worth a shot. I've enjoyed getting to do this. This is, of course, um, one of many of these. If you want to go see the other shootouts that are on the channel, go check them out. If I were to pick one of these to choose, if you were going between the two, I would say the Sundew is a better choice for a mead specifically. Now, I can't say for every style mead or those things, but I can say specifically for this traditional sake. My next step for these is going to be, I'll probably end up um, letting them age for a little while longer and then possibly back sweetening and then just or back sweetening or doing something extra with them. But for now, this video is over. Again, I've had a lot of fun. Go check out the other ones if you'd like to and make sure to hit like and subscribe. I'll be back with some more shootouts and some various other things that I do on the channel. I hope you have a great day. Cheers.